This episode of Hack College is sponsored by Squarespace and Radar.net. This is Hack College. It's the uncle that insists that you drink at Thanksgiving dinner. Today we're going to show you how to pack your clothes so that none of your fancy stuff gets wrinkled over Thanksgiving break. We'll talk about how the government is buying up $6.5 billion in student loans and how that affects you. And we asked 101 college students, have you ever blacked out before? The answer will surprise you. Stick with us. It's Hack College. <laughs> Welcome to Hack College, I'm Kelly. And I'm Chris. Hack College is a life hacking and study tip show for college students. Somehow our basketball team is playing Notre Dame tonight, so... so we're drinking a 40 so that we feel better about our loss. Yeah. Basically. Future loss. Anyway, let's get into this week's Opposable Thumbs. This is Opposable Thumbs. We take three college news stories and give them the finger. Thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs to the side in 60 seconds or less. Story number one. Virginia Tech texting service fails in a false alarm. Thumbs down, bummer. Very so down, basically, yeah. Virginia Tech put in one of those text alert systems into their, their, their public safety office yeah. after they had that catastrophe, obviously. And um, so the point is that it's supposed to send out blasts of text messages to everyone on campus when there's a dangerous situation that everyone should avoid. But unfortunately, like the system failed, like not all of the text messages were delivered. And I'm not sure if it's the cell towers that were to blame, like they just got like overloaded or if it was the service itself. I'm guessing um, the service didn't release the messages in waves. So if like one cell tower is like, oh, shit, I got to send out 40,000 messages, then it's like, well, yeah, can't handle that. So it just forgot yeah. about all of them. This is not it's good a, because, I mean, LMU has a text alert system. You know, and, all sorts of schools have yeah, them now, and yeah. so it's it's kind of scary that they wouldn't work. Um, it, it turned out it was just like these compressed air things that someone was yeah. pulling a prank and exploding. Anyway, yeah. story number two. A website that gets you paid for good grades. We got this originally from the Harvard Crimson. Thumbs to the side. Thumbs up for me. Okay, so the website is gradefund.com, and it basically uh, lets you have family members or friends or random people pledge money towards you and the better your grades are, the more you get paid off of your tuition. Yeah, I think this is definitely cool, but uh, I feel like it's a little too gimmicky and it's not gonna catch on. Like, like think of like how many teeth you have to pull just to like, just to be like, hey, you wanna here's, pledge me for like well, a marathon? Here's what I immediately started thinking about was just mainly family members, where it's like, yeah. you, you, like you can go up to them and oh. be like, come on, dude, throw me a bone. Throw you know, if bone. I get a 4.0, just throw me throw 100 me bucks. $2 I mean, for a 40. Come on. And, and like you can get like into really minuscule stuff, like literally, you know, if you've got really good grades like me, you know, then you can be like, well, if I get a 3.9, which like, how hard is that, you know? Yeah. Three nine. If I get a three nine, then you've got to like pay me more. You know, that's pretty good. So I, I, good. I think it's pretty good. And I'm also thinking about those relatives who are just nosy as, and are would actually kind of subscribe to the service just to see oh. if I get a bad grade so they could <laughs> gossip about it. You know. Story number three. Department of Education buys six point five billion dollars worth of loans. Yippee! Hooray! Oh, thumbs to the side. Thumbs up, I guess. I don't, okay. I don't really know what this means. So, Can you so, please so clarify? basically, um, the the Department of Education is throwing six point five billion dollars to buy loans from the lenders. Students get all excited when they hear this stuff because they're like, "I'm not, I'm not gonna have to pay my loans." You know, that's not true. Um, actually, they buy the loans from the lenders. The government assumes the risk okay. then, at that point, and then. Um, then that supposedly does two things for the lenders. Sort of like the lenders now have six point five billion dollars worth of room oh, where they can okay. give out more loans to new students, um, and also it just makes the lenders a little more comfortable because it's like, oh, good, the government buys these every so so often, so there's like less risk involved with getting yeah. into them. There's probably not too much risk involved in student loans in general. That's something that I, I'm not sure of is like actually yeah. how risky a student loan is because you can't. It's not like a mortgage where you know someone's salary or certain yeah. information about yeah. them and how risky they are. You know, so it's like, do they decide that on uh, by like major or you something? Mean I don't by know. shotgunning a beer. This is girls gone wild. <laughs> If you'd like to be featured shotgunning a beer, please send an email to shotgun at hackcollege.com or upload it via our brand new website. Wow, and you can get a little backlink from us for that, so it's really worth it. Yeah. It'll improve some traffic for you maybe exactly. for a moment. <laughs> um, and now for a little segment where I'm gonna show you how to pack all of your shit into one suitcase without it getting wrinkly whatsoever. It's really cool. This is how to pack all your fancy holiday clothes without them getting all wrinkled. A little method called bundle packing makes it possible to pack something like a blazer in a small carry-on without 
any wrinklage. So the basic idea here is to put the least important stuff in the middle and the most important stuff around the outside. So you wanna start with a little core thing. I've got just socks, underwear, undershirts, things that don't matter if they get wrinkled. And I'm sorta of gonna wrap this in like a burrito fashion um, into a bandana later. You can use like a little tote bag or whatnot. But that's just your middle stabilizer and the rest of the clothing is gonna get wrapped around the stabilizer. And the first thing we're gonna do is take the most important garment and lay it down. A jacket is the only situation where you want the collar facing outward. And then the next most important thing is the dress shirt. And I just leave it with enough room so I can feel the jacket right about there, the collar there. And I want these collars to just barely graze against sort of the, the core in the center there. Then the next thing is a long sleeve shirt because you know how when you fold up a long sleeve shirt, it gets all wrinkly and whatnot. So I'm spreading this out. We've got like a six armed creature sort of template here. Next are my t-shirts. So I'm just alternating back and forth around this imaginary core here. The ultimate order here is important jacket, then like nicely pressed shirts, long sleeved shirts, then short sleeved t-shirts, and then pants, because pants aren't as important, but I'm gonna put my nicely pressed pants next, and you just put the legs sticking out to the side like that, and, and we want the waistband just beyond the edge of the core. And then the other pair of pants, which is the jeans and the least important thing in the other direction. Now this is the cool part when we start wrapping it all up. We start with that little burrito and I am actually going to wrap this like a Chipotle all-star. With both pairs of pants, you start with the long end that's extending and you wrap it completely around the item first on the inside. Then you finish it up. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. You don't wanna sort of like wrap them both and then try and, you know, no. We wrap this guy completely around, finish it. And I'm gonna keep folding in this fashion and the arms of shirts go first like this. If we were just folding things normally, we would have creases that are getting just put right into your items. Then this t-shirt like so. And then around like that. It's important to get these arms pretty well stretched because also this is keeping taut the back of the shirt underneath here. And then the jacket is the only real exception to the arm rule. We just want to kind of uh, go with the tailoring here. Obviously this is going to be a little more of like an X than straight across, but we just want to have as few wrinkles in here as possible. All right, so as you can see, the blazer, which is in the outermost part of the, the bundle, is getting wrapped around the largest surface area. And then I'm gonna put this big bundle inside of this little suitcase. Here we go. And you better hope you don't like shit on yourself in the airplane or something because it's gonna take you about 25 minutes to get in there for your underwear. <laughs> So that's bundle wrapping in a nutshell. Visit onebag.com for more details on bundle wrapping and just how to travel light. You might get so obsessed with bundle wrapping that you'll bundle wrap all your clothes that way too in your drawers. All right, now let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Radar.net. Radar is the ultimate camera phone picture social network. It lets you share pictures privately with your friends by uploading them quickly right from your phone. Snap a picture, email, or MMS it with a caption and it's online instantly. Check out their brand new website design, their mind-blowing Facebook app, and their just released Twitter integration, which I am absolutely loving. Check it out at Radar.net. So thanks a lot to Radar.net. For our next College 101, we asked 101 college students if they had ever blacked out. Let's see what they had to say. What's up? Kelly Sutton here with Hack College in our segment we're calling College 101. Today we're going to ask 101 college students if they've ever blacked out. Have you ever blacked out from drinking too much? No. Yes. 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 Of the 101 students we surveyed, 43 claimed they had blacked out before. Twitter and RSS, you've got to catch up. Can I, can I say I've grayed out rather than 
it's it's a little less extreme. I wouldn't say it was a complete blackout. No. 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 I haven't. No. No. I want to talk about two things in this college 101. First, most of the people who blacked out sounded ashamed. Not too surprising, I guess. Yes. I will be honest. Wow, I would like to take the fifth on that one, but okay. uh, unfortunately, maybe a couple times. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Yeah. Once. Some students that hadn't blacked out felt that they were in the minority. It's really the exact opposite, at least according to our survey. It's really too bad that people believe that not drinking is that much of a rarity. Actually, I never have. I've not blacked out before. I actually never have. I, I don't really understand how people can black out. Maybe it's just because it's never happened to me, but... No, thank goodness. Um, I don't really... I'd like to remember my nights. I think it's a really good thing for, you know, all college students and especially women to um, know what they did the night before. I actually have not. Can't say I have. No. Now we talk about drinking plenty on Hack College, and let us remind you, don't go killing yourself, because if you did, our numbers would go down. Not that I can remember. Not that I can recall. I don't remember. Yes. 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 No. 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 <laughs> no. 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 Not like that. No. No. No? No. No, I haven't. No. 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 Never. Let us know what you think of this College 101. Post a comment on HackCollege.com or leave a comment on the video. Uh, yeah. I guess I have. Indeed I have. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you in part by Squarespace, the greatest blogging platform we've ever seen. Squarespace is the most customizable blogging platform on the planet. It's easy to learn. It's easy to operate. It's very, very fancy. It's so fantastic that Hack College is currently on Squarespace and loving it. Yes. Agreed. Holla. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure you hit up hackcollege.com throughout the week for all of your collegiate life hackery needs. But in the needs. meantime, you can definitely have consistent updates by just following the Hack College Twitter account, or you can mm -hmm. follow Lazinski, which is me, or you can follow Kelly Sutton, which is him, which is our personal lives and other mm -hmm. good shit. Um, that's it, though. I'm Chris Lazinski. And I'm Kelly Sutton. And until next week... Americans, happy Thanksgiving. Other people just take a break or something, I guess. Oh,